Hello and welcome back, Sleepy What's It here with another miniatures video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a beginner hobbyist kit that I put together for my brother later last year. My intent with this video is not to be prescriptive in saying you should buy these specific products, but instead try to explain some of the thought process that went behind putting this kit together so that you can build something for yourself or someone that's interested in getting into the miniatures hobby. For this kit, I meant it to be very targeted at painting specific models that I knew my brother had on hand, which at the time I thought were uh, the Night Vault starter box, so Stormcast and Night Haunt. He actually had the Shadespire starter box, so, you know, Stormcast and Corn. My bad. But we're going to proceed uh, targeting Stormcast and Night Haunt. I'm going to be basing this kit around GW's Age of Sigmar Starter Painting Tools Kit because it provides a lot of paints that are useful for painting these models and a lot of the tools uh, that you need come in there and it's basically at a reasonable price because it's packed together. Other kits uh, like a basic paint set from Vallejo or Army Painter or Reaper's Learn to Paint kits would also be good starting points or if you're doing 40k there's 40k uh, paint and tool kits. So the kit that I'm going to be Starting with is a good point, but it's really not complete for my purposes because I want kind of all of the essentials in the kit. And there are some things in the kit that are a little bit duds, so I want to replace. Let's quickly go through an inventory of what we're getting from the kit. Things that were good and we're going to keep are the clippers. They're fine. Not the best in the world, but the quality increase I would get by buying a different pair really isn't worth upgrading it. They're sufficient for cutting out uh, uh, GW models from sprues. Most of the paints that come in the kit are good. Specifically, the ones that we're definitely keeping are Corn Red, Canter Blue, Mornfang Brown, Bugman's Glow, Raycarth Flesh, White Scar, Celestra Gray, Abaddon Black, Lead Belcher, Retributor Gold, Ricklin F uh, Flesh Shade, and Night Haunt Gloom. So all those paints will give us a uh, strong red, uh, blue, and brown mats, as well as a mid and light Caucasian flesh tone and your classic black, gray, white trio that you want. We also get a nice uh, yellow metallic and a nice uh, gray metallic, as well as shade, though. A uh, flesh tone shade would be probably the third most important shade, I'd say, that you can get. So all those are nice to have. And we also get a technical paint that's uh, good for doing ghost effects. This is a good, uh, strong paint set, personally. I mentioned this in the previous review I've done this, that you only really need to add a couple more paints to get a full working palette out of it. Some of the things that we are going to be replacing, though, are the brush, the texture paste, and the mold line removal tool that come in there. Um, the starter brush is, as I've said before, not a great brush. It might be fine for a single project to get you into painting, but it's really not worth the plastic it's made of. The mold line removal tool if, that comes with this kit is just really a blade, so you'd probably have to build a handle for it. And I'm also personally preferential to using abrasives or a hobby knife for removing mold lines. And finally, the texture paste they included is the yellow, ugly uh, Armageddon dust stuff that is probably my least favorite color of texture paste. But say so the uh, gray or brown paste, I think, would have been a better inclusion, which is what they've done in more recent kits. Moving on from the paint and tool kit set, let's see what other things I wanted to add to this kit to fill things out. First here, we have a hobby knife with some replaceable blades. I'm preferential to this specific hobby knife handle style and the blades, but there's a wide variety of manufacturers of these out there, and some people use scalpels even. But basically something with replaceable blades because you'll damage them and you don't want to have to replace your entire hobby knife just because you need a new blade. Next are some sanding sticks, since the models will have mold lines on them and flash that need to be removed. Uh, these combined with a good hobby knife should be sufficient for removing any excess bits you need uh, on to get off of plastic models. If you're going to be working with primarily metal uh, miniatures, you probably want to substitute the sanding sticks with small files, though the hobby knife can be used for removing flash from metal also. Next we have the adhesive that I included, which is Tamiya uh, Plastic Cement. Uh, this stuff smells bad, but works really well since GW Plastic is made from polystyrene. Just make sure to use it in a well-ventilated space, possibly with a mask. If you're working with metal 
resin or PVC plastic like Reaper Bones, you'll need to use Sino Acrylate Glue, aka Super Glue, since plastic cement will not properly adhere to those materials. Before painting, you're going to want to prime your models to keep the paint from coming off. Uh, so we're going to include some of that in here. Most airbrush primers can do double duty as a brush on primer. So I think they're pretty good for beginners uh, because they tend to come in large quantities at a reasonable price. I've included a standard triplet of white, gray, and black primers. I have an entire video going into priming in detail if you want to learn more about the variety of options that exist for priming. I'll put a card up for it now so you can go check that out. Similar to having primer to keep the painted here, you're going to want to varnish models after you finish them off. So I've included a bottle of matte Vallejo varnish, uh, which can be both airbrushed on or put on by brush. I generally prefer matte varnishes over glossy or satin ones. For actually painting, I've included a standard size Citadel painting handle. This is the old style, just because of when this video or this box was made. Nothing too exciting here. It's better, in my opinion, than trying to sticky tack models onto pill bottles for painting. Uh, to replace the brush that came from the Paint and Tools kit, I've actually included some of the brushes that come from the Reaper Learn to Paint kit, since I did have duplicates of those and I think they're nice brushes. These are solid synthetic brushes, uh, they're a good beginner brush, and depending on your taste in brushes, they're ones that can actually be mainstay of like a journeyman painter, like it's, these aren't like throw away after a couple use brushes. I believe there was a number two flat, a number one, a number zero, and a triple zero round in here. I probably should have included a larger round, like a number two or a number four, though I can't recall if I did end up throwing one of those in. For cleaning and maintaining the brushes, I've included a puck of Master's Brush uh, Cleaner and Preserver. This stuff is really good and pretty much what everyone that I know that paints minis recommends for cleaning your brushes. And it's available at most arts and craft stores, so... That, uh, that's a no-brainer. To expand the paint selection, I also added a few more paints to the box before sending it out. To fill out the holy trinity of shades, I included a pot of Nuln Oil and of Agrax Earthshade uh, to get a black and a brown wash in here. Since the Thorns of the Briar Queen uh, have a lot of vines and flowers, I added in a green and a purple paint in the form of Elysian Green and Gene Steeler Purple. Uh, there's also... Celestial Grey, which is the grey tone that came in the kit, has a little bit of a blue tone to it, so I included a pot of Dawnstone, since it's a more neutral tone grey, just to kind of fill things out. There are a number of things I did not include in the box, even though I do believe they're important for a beginner painter to have. Uh, they probably weren't included either because it's impractical to mail them across the country, or they're relatively easy to source locally normally. So first is a palette though I may have actually thrown in a couple of these at the last minute now that I think about it. But anyway, for a starting painter, a simple plastic palette like this or a pad of palette paper should be sufficient and easy to get at any arts and crafts store or at a hobby store. There's probably no need to get into like uh, having a whole wet palette set up when you're starting out. As a beginner, you're also going to need some sort of container for holding water for washing off your brushes in when you're switching colors and such. I personally use uh, sour cream containers, since they're nice and wide, don't tip over easily, and unlike a coffee mug, I'm very unlikely to try drinking out of them. I also didn't include anything like paper towel or sponge for dabbing off brushes, on, uh, because, yeah, you can basically get those from any kitchen normally. Finally, I just really wasn't able to figure out how to squish down an entire comfortable workstation and good lighting into a small mailing box, so those uh, weren't shipped along with it. There are a, a couple of things that in retrospect, a few months after the fact, that I kind of think I should have included in the kit that I didn't. I wish I'd included a yellow and an orange paint to complete the color wheel, since especially without a yellow, you can't make an orange, so like there's definitely a warm spot missing in the color wheel. Um, yeah, so this would mostly allow you to paint basically any project with this kit. Um, for this specific combo of paints, I probably would have added in Troll Slayer Orange and Averlin Sunset from GW. I also probably would I should have thrown in an alternative texture paste like Astro Granite. And with that, I think we've gone over everything I have to say in this video. I hope you found it informative, and if you did enjoy the video, please give it a like. If you want to see more videos in the future about miniatures and hobbying and things like that, please subscribe to the channel. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.